we're going to drop off the wood at Sean's. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do you just know everyone here in the village? In this place? Mm, do I know everybody? Yeah, it seems like you know everyone. Uh, everyone who lives here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty small, small little little town. Yeah. Not very big. True. Friendly and Minakami. coming. Yeah. Most yeah. people are friendly. Yeah. Do you think people here are more friendly than in like Tokyo or like the city and stuff? I don't know. I haven't lived in the in the city. Oh. I've only lived in here, so I'm not quite sure. I suppose they are because yeah, everyone's like got their head down in Tokyo. Going to work, we're here. They're like pretty more a bit more relaxed than everywhere else everyone's got kids you know everyone's got kids and they go to school just up the road so everyone sort okay. of you know all the families get to go get together and do the sports uh, carnivals and stuff like that oh yeah so everyone knows you know with little kids like this how I ended up here yeah like you came from Australia yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, I worked in Cairns in the northern part of Australia where? Cancer? Cairns. 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 Oh. So Cairns is in the north, northern part, eastern coast of uh, Australia. Okay. Where they have uh, a rafting river. Or two rafting, well a few rafting rivers, but um, the main one is uh, the Tully River. Mm. And I trained up there in on the Tully River. Stayed there for nearly five years. Okay. And then... Um, one of the owners uh, or the manager of one of the, the companies here was called Forest and Water. A few of the guys from Cairns had already worked there so they um, introduced me, one of the managers when they came to Australia and said, oh, this guy wouldn't be bad to go to Japan, go and spend some time in Japan. Oh. So um, he asked me to come and I went, yeah, why not? Travel around the world, so the first place I thought, oh, well, I'll start at Japan and then uh, Maybe go to Costa Rica. Cool. I wanted to go to Africa as well. Yeah. So I thought oh, I'll come to Japan first. A lot of my friends were here already. A lot of foreigners at that stage were in, in Japan. Yeah. Um, who used to work in Cairns. So when I first came to Minokami, there was probably about, I'll say maybe 20, yeah. 20 foreigners, oh, I damn. suppose, working in Minokami. And most of them I already knew from Cairns. Um, they used to transit from Australia to Japan um, for the seasons so I thought oh this would be great so I popped in here first and uh, stayed haven't haven't gone anywhere haven't been anywhere just stayed in Minokami so not gonna go to Costa Rica anymore or Africa uh, at the moment no I got other priorities now that yeah I'd rather uh, sure. stay in Japan are we going up to like Doi area? No, we're going to uh, a friend of mine, Sean's in uh, Fujiwara. He's got a, a place up there on the on the lake. I've got another friend in Minokami called Dex, and I took a load of firewood to him the other week. And Sean's gone to me. Oh, if you got any left? I got a little bit left. So if you want to pick it up, come and pick it up. But he hasn't been to pick it up. So I thought, oh, well, well, we don't have any customers today. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll load up, okay. throw it on the back of my truck, clean out my place a little bit of firewood and take it up for him. So that's where I'm off to, okay. to drop off some firewood at uh, Sean's place up here in uh, in Fujiwara. Is it far? It's probably about 20 minutes. It's not that far. Up to, where can I say, the, the four lakes up here. So you've been like rafting for since like a year ago. I think since 1996 was probably yeah. the first time. Yeah. Why why did you do this? Like you just you just started it and it was your calling? It was just Was it my calling? Like was it just all you wanted to do? No. Your... I wanted to do something. Um when I was in Australia I had a, a girlfriend, she wanted to travel the world. And she was on ships. She liked to be on uh, on the sea. Yeah. So I had to find a job which was going to say, well, 
I can travel the world and do a job where I can travel the world and I found out that okay rafting might be the job that oh. might take me around the world oh. so I trained up in Cairns six week course my girlfriend started off doing the first week and we paid I don't know probably about three thousand dollars I suppose she quit and I went well I better keep going because we just paid, paid that much money <laughs> someone's better better keep going so that's uh, that's what I did, that's why I thought, oh well. Rafting you can do anywhere in the world really. And the only reason I really stayed in, well in Cairns was to um, get to the high, higher position so when I do go overseas that I had enough knowledge. So, um, you know, four and a half, four and a half years of guiding in Australia is quite a renowned river that I can go around the world and pretty much, you know, jump on the river and know what I'm doing. How did you meet um, Tomo then? How did I meet Tomo? One of my mates owned a company in, in Huckaba, uh -huh. a guy called Dave. Tomo worked for Dave and um, I had a big children's group on and I didn't have enough staff at the time so I asked Dave to come over and help me with um, with the rafting part of my tour. When uh, Dave came he bought Tomo. Tomo was training or was one of Dave's canoe guides and at that time she didn't have any work so Dave said oh do you want to come over and pop over and see Minakami because she'd never been to Minakami before so she went yeah and then um, I met her and um, became friends Dave said to me one day that his company was going down to Shikoku after summer like um, a summer company tour and at that stage I didn't have any work on for after the summer season either so I went all right Maybe I'll take my I'll take my staff and meet you halfway, and we'll go to Shikoku together, and we'll go and raft the the Yoshinogawa. So I was able to meet up with Tomo again, become better friends. Well, we weren't that busy, so we came back, and um, I asked her, hey, "What are you doing? Do you want to pop over to Minakami again?" And by that time, there was a thing in uh, a party in uh, Minakami called um, Snow Splash. So she had me popped over for that as well, hooked up after the Snow Splash, and. That's how we met, pretty much from uh, friends of friends, uh, introducing us and becoming friends after that. A lot of uh, rafting instructors uh, get married to uh, their customers, but she wasn't really our customer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, if you were supposed to get with your customer, how would you do it? Yeah, you just start flirting with them while you're rafting? <laughs> what's, what's, pretty, what's, not, what's, yeah, what's, uh, <laughs> a lot of them do, I suppose. Okay. Why not? It's uh, quite an easy job when you rescue, throw someone in the water or you go upside down and you rescue someone, they sort of, uh, what can I say? Feel, feel look here like a... <laughs> like a saviour, a god. Yeah, a god sort of thing. So, yeah, um, rafting guides are not a bad sort of little job for uh, if you're single. Like yeah, there are a lot of couples, um, but there are uh, a lot of those single people too who come up with their girlfriends and things. There's a lot of nurses. Okay. Um, and groups of girls, we come up. Yeah. A lot of them do canyoning. Yeah, Japanese girls are quite adventurous, I reckon. Yeah. At some stage, you might go into a tunnel in, uh, in Minakami and might find a bear. It's just talking about bears just down here. Um, friend and I were running in the morning one morning seven or maybe six thirty seven o'clock in the morning still cold yeah. came around the bend bear fell out of a tree landed on a vine my friend ran back the other direction and the bear attacked him not me oh he just down in here he didn't get hurt right? yeah he did he didn't die yeah. how did he not die threw the bear over the over the fence but that was before it ripped the hole in his nipple. What? Ripped the hole in his nipple, cut half of his bicep, his left hand side bicep, cut a bit into his hand, yeah. took a bit out of his finger, just down that road there. Sure. So that road actually goes from here all the way down to the Fujiwara Dam, or not the Fujiwara Dam, down the, well, one of the dams down there. This is Fujiwara Lake. I suppose it's called Fujiwara Dam, just down that way. But you can go from this way to that way, and it used to be uh, down there is where they used to start the half marathon. 
well, they called it the, the Fujiwara Marathon, which it's only about 14 kilometers, so it's not real, uh, a real marathon, but you know, this is the way they used to run. Up here, down through that tunnel, or down through that track, but because of bears, I suppose they closed it off. What kind of bear was it? Um, a little black bear. So only a little thing, probably about the size of a German Shepherd. Oh, okay. But enough to, you know. Yeah. Um, well, could really hurt someone. The next day it actually attacked someone else. Oh. Attacks an old fella and, and uh, injured him more. But my, my mate went to hospital. Went to hospital and was pretty much unable to use his right hand for, for nearly a year, I suppose. But come good. He's all good now. But you won't see me running up here too much anymore. <laughs> right, we're nearly there. Yeah. Just up here. Yeah, look, look. Here he is here. Look at that! Look at that tree house! It's only half done. It's a beauty, isn't it? It's a beer tent, isn't it? How you doing? Good. So beautiful. Yeah. I've got a bit coming in there as well. So it ran for Yeah, how is I don't know what it was, but it was big. If you go up to Yagizawa that way, yeah, and the first big bridge, it's got a big, I don't know, like a brown bridge up there. I don't know what they are, but what we used to do a one day trip up there. Like, what's your priorities for a customer's experience at I Love Outdoors? You know, like fast food places, they got that, like, val they got their values, and oh, we deliver fresh food, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know what's your thing. In, from my, perspective for me going to Disneyland you go to Disneyland you get the, the experience from before you even walk in the door you know you see the the big sign and come in and you go whoa and then you know you get a bit of a rundown you get the map and you do a few things and then you go and do the activity you know and I yeah. for me if you well even doing the the safety talk and the, the change talk it's more like the whole experience instead of, okay, they're coming for a rafting tour. Yeah, I know you're going for a rafting yeah. and you think the most important thing is, or the most enjoyable thing is jumping on the raft and going for a paddle. But I, I reckon for me, or for a customer's view, it's from when you walk into the door yeah. to when you line up and do the, do the, what is it, the office part. And then go to the changing. Yep. So just as important as going rafting is the changing talk. Yep. You know how you know getting people enthused. Those people who are like a little bit scared. Mm. It's more okay. I'll find out who's scared, who's not scared, who can't swim, who can swim, <laughs> who's a little bit you know wary of what they're going to do today. Yep. So that little experience there, and then okay. Um, are you ready to go? You know, this is, you know, your day off. A lot of people turn up and they're like, oh, oh I've just had a big long drive, oh, just yeah. done this. Yeah. It's like, well, now you're here, <laughs> enjoy it, you know? Yeah. What have you come for? You haven't come to sit here and moan about it. You yeah. Come and enjoy it. Yeah.
So mine's sort of the, you know, give him a little bit more of a, a push in the side of enjoyment wise, you know. Not at work, let's enjoy it now. Give him a bit of a few few jokes at the start. Yeah. You know, get him get him happy, get him moving and enthusiastic about what they're going to do because it's all good for me as well. You know, yeah. if you're enthusiastic and you're you're having a great time, then I'm going to have a great time. That's my biggest thing to try and move people who aren't you know here to have it. Well, I don't know why they're here really. They're paying money to be here. Yeah. Make sure that you're spending your money. You know the best way you can yeah. so if I can do that you know I'm, I'm happy when they come back with a big smile at the end go well the start I was a little bit worried because Grassy's out there going Aah! screaming at me to hurry up and get out there but I reckon that's all with the experience you know on the grassy the grassy experience I've got you know a few different guides out there doing different things but if they come with me I want to give them 100 110 120 percent of my excitement and my enthusiasm you know so people enjoy themselves they might not yeah. but hopefully that you know they do and they'll never forget you know you, you get some customers that go oh I've been before yeah, okay who you been with oh I can't remember <laughs> it's like well you're never gonna forget me then eh? <laughs> and that's probably why you know yeah I've got dreads yeah um, in the last few years to make sure that people don't forget. <laughs> One stage many years ago I had a mohawk. So every year, you know, people come back, give them something different, yeah. paint something different on the walls. So every time they come back, it's like, whoa, he's changed something again. Huh. So that's yeah. my my thinking with um, in a business that hopefully, you know, I can do a little bit better than everybody else. Yeah. Make everyone's uh, experience in the outdoors with I Love Outdoors in Minokami a little bit different than yeah. going to some other company. You know? That's great fun. Yeah. And that's probably why I'm still in the business. Um, if I don't like doing it, I just don't, I won't do it. No, for sure. I mean, we do we do canoeing as well, mm -hmm. which you've been up there as well. Yeah. But for me, I mean, I like to go for a paddle, you know, on the lake sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's nice and relaxing yeah. in beautiful scenery, but it doesn't take anything compared to rafting. Rafting and canyoning is, um, <laughs> is the bee's knees. Or even the same length as that one. So I've got bacon, bacon, my meat, my meat, my meat. What's this burger? That's the grassy's burger. This one's got a bit of a spice to it. My lettuce, my tomato, my onion. Pineapple. I, I think that you need a bit of butter with your bun. So I used to work in a fish and chip shop, eh? a takeaway store uh, called Tigers in Australia, very famous in my little hometown. You used to cook fish and chips, hamburgers, battered salad, scallops. My thinking was when I came here to give everyone a bit of a uh, taste of um, Australian hamburger. I've never seen a pineapple in a burger. Oh, it makes it beautiful. Is that Australian? Australian, yeah. Australian, maybe Hawaiian, maybe, I don't know, but it makes it sweet, beautiful, nothing. You can't do without pineapple. Some people don't like it. I love it. Worming. Yeah. What's that? You ever been beach worming? No. That's my hobby. I can show you later. Okay. I love beach worming. Fishing, kites, love flying kites. So when I'm in Australia, that's that's what I, I do. I fly kites, catching abalone and catching crayfish, touring. When I get time. Painting. Yeah. Did you paint this right here? I painted that one, yeah. Put your hand on it. Squeeze it down. Put it in your little thing there, and the chips will come in a little bit later. Okay. Off you go. Enjoy. All right. So this is the official grassy burger. Me is this the mega, the mega one? Mega burger. Official grassy mega burger.
Bread is good. I don't think I've got to the pineapple yet, but the bread is good though.